connecting in with your higher self so that you're bringing all levels of your consciousness intentionally on board for creating the consciousness that you want to have and embody. Um, and I say embody because our body is a consciousness. So we want to bring our body on board so that the cells in our body are in alignment with what we are wanting to create. Welcome to today's episode of Influence by Design. I'm your host, Samantha Riley, and today we're going to be talking about all things abundance. Now, I've invited Louise Havers, who's the creator of the Helix Method. She's going to be talking more about that. She's a master Akashic Records teacher and a business mentor, and she enables high achievers and coaches to unlock their superpowers and lift the ceiling in both their lives and their businesses. So if you are someone who has got some had some money come in, you've put the brakes on and you're wondering why, then this conversation is really going to help you. So welcome to the show, Louisa. It's great to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so delighted to be here. Really looking now, forward to our conversation. Absolutely. Now, just tell us where in the world you are and what the time is there, because this is pretty cool. <laughs> so I am in the UK and it is 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> like that was I slightly feel like I've got jet lag. <laughs> it's you are just such an absolute angel for coming on at this time. I didn't realize I, here I am having my coffee because it's early and having a little whinge to myself and it's 11 p.m. there. But between us, we're going to absolutely knock this out of the path. I can feel it. We've got some great energy happening. Why don't you share a little bit to kick us off what it is that you do and the types of clients that you work with? Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. So I work with coaches and entrepreneurs to help them break through their money ceilings, break through the upper limits. We could have these upper limits in all areas of life so that they can have more fulfillment. I find most people are whatever area they're seeking an expansion in is ultimately that the desire is for more fulfillment across all areas of life. And I do that by working very energetically with, with people you mentioned in the, the intro working with the Akashic Records and the Helix Methods. And, you know, and I bring in the, the business strategies when I'm bringing that piece in for some of my clients as well. And just to mention about the, the Helix Method. So the Helix Method is our energy psychology modality that is the modality that I created after all the training that I've done, uh, working with clients, finding that I was doing things in this in this certain way. And it was evolved from a client actually asking me, saying, can you teach me to do what you do so that I can work with my clients? And funnily enough, she asked me the day after I'd had my coaching call with my with my coach and I'd literally written down, right, okay, I'm going to launch a certification program. And then I woke up in the morning to her request. I was like, well, that's a lot. <laughs> well, isn't that the most beautiful way for the universe to go, Louisa, wake up, this is what we want. <laughs> No, I love it. I love it. I was like, okay, I'm listening. Right. Let's, let's <laughs> okay, we're doing this thing now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's so that fantastic. Cool. Love it so much. Now, you and I were having a conversation before we started recording, and I thought this was interesting because I haven't had this conversation with people before, but I've definitely noticed it in my clients, and that is people that are having that that sort of that first successful launch or this first, you know, influx of clients coming in after a bit of a, a client drought. And on the outside, they're all excited. They're like, wow, we finally got some money in the bank. This is great. But energetically, you can see them go into some sort of freak out. They put the brakes on and it's almost like this coming down the other side of the roller coaster where, you know, not every time, but a lot of times they really do energetically stop the continuation of this money cycle. I would love to start here and let you lead this conversation because this is something that you mentioned that you see as well and something that, that you help people with. So can you talk more to, you know, what you see and then let's dive into, you know, what we can do to help. Yes, it makes sense to people when I've shared this with my clients and my community members. So I'm sure people will be nodding along and going, oh, that's mm -hmm. what's happened. If 
if they've experienced this. And the piece, if we think of everything's energy, I know everyone will be, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get that in your community. And money is energy. That if we have a sudden windfall of a bigger amount of money coming in than perhaps our nervous system and our energy field is used to, it can actually feel, it actually creates a shock within our system and creates this sort of nervousness response. And listeners might remember, I know I certainly remember various people telling me this when I was growing up. You know, if I said I was nervous about something, you'd say, oh, your body doesn't know the difference between nervousness and excitement. Just tell yourself you're excited and you'll be, you'll be okay. So if we think about the kind of flip side of that, we're really excited. The launch has gone really well. Suddenly we've had more money coming in, we've got more clients coming in and we're really excited and the body is really nervous and it's mm-hmm. felt that shock, if that makes sense. And what can happen is just to kind of put a bit of theory <laughs> for, for the listeners so they can understand where I'm coming from this, is within the Helix Method Art, we talk about three flows of energy state that we can be in at any one time and we'll we'll be holding all of them at various points of our life so we've got i call it the three hours we've got the receptive energy so that's like the flow state that's the state that we want to be in when everything's going really well we've had the windfall the clients have all come in the launch was a huge success it was just absolutely amazing and we want more and more of that across all areas of our life. And then we have resistance. So that's the second one. Resistance is that feeling of you're going in the right direction. It's feeling sticky. It's like, why is it just like pushing treacle up a hill? I might feel like I'm doing two steps forward, three steps back. I'm, you know, making progress, but the doubt's beginning to kick in, or I'm feeling burnt out, or whatever it might be. And then the third one is resi- um, reversed energy. And this is where we, it comes from when we have a shock and we can literally go in the the wrong direction. We're like taking all the action, things that were working before suddenly aren't working. And it's because we've got this energetic reversal in our field that is literally just creating this, this block. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. And I have seen a lot of people in all three of these. So it was very easy for me as you were explaining those to go, Yep, I've seen that one. Yep, I've seen that one. Yep, definitely seen that one. Yeah. And it's to know that because energy is always changing. So we can, we, I will to create future energetic, um, you know, reversals and resistances, etc. The key is being able to know how to, to spot them and to then change them because we, we can change them. We don't have to kind of live, live with them indefinitely. Thank goodness. And so this is where, when we've had that windfall and we've, it's felt like a shock to our system because we haven't got the energetic capacity to, to hold that amount of money for it to feel kind of normal rather than it to be that so exciting in brackets, nervous system feeling freaked out and going into an energetic reverse state. So that's where if somebody's recognizing this and going, oh my goodness, that's what's happening. Well, that resonates for me and this could be what's happening. It could be that they're, they're holding an energetic reversal, as I would call it, around their experience of having that large amount of money coming in. And so their nervous system is going to try and calibrate everything back down to where they, where they were before. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Where my head is going, so I'm going to flip forward a little bit so that we can go mm-hmm. back. I have see a lot of people in sort of this resistance energy or this reverse energy think they're usually very aware that they've got some sort of money block or something's not quite right. And what I see is them going towards things like, you know, how can I make these quantum leaps? How can I sort of work on my manifestation? Do you need to go back and sort this out before you go forward? Yes, it's going to be so much easier to go forward when you've done the going back and finding out what the root was because otherwise the body is going to try and keep recreating that experience, if that makes sense, because we haven't let the energy of that go. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's where you can you can recognize it where you feel like you're doing all the actions that were working before and suddenly they're not working. Mm-hmm. Um 
or you're recognizing these patterns. And this might be a helpful example actually to, to, to share. I remember working with a, a, a client, private client, and she was having these amazing months and then like months of nothing, but the marketing hadn't changed. So she's like, let me see what is going on. We've got to, we've got to figure, we've got to figure this out. But that's not good for my nervous system. Of course uh-huh. it's not good for anyone's nervous system. Because of course, if you think about that, she's going into, well, hey, we've just had a, you know, 100K month or whatever it is. Yay, excitement slash energetic reversal to, oh my God, there's no money coming in. Energetic reversal. And so there's this kind of looping going on that was you know, creating havoc with our nervous system. And we did some, within the Helix method, we use muscle testing or uh, kinesiology as, as I call it, to find out what is going on in the, in the body, in the subconscious mind. And we were muscle testing on, I asked her, cause I, you know, you mentioned about the Akashic records and working with energy, of course, I work very intuitively. So I knew to ask, I was like, what's your, what was your income last year? And she consciously said, do you know what? I don't actually know what it is. I said, well, let's muscle test to find out what your, you know, point, I can't go above this point. You know, this is your upper limit. And yeah. we muscle tested it on, and I forget the exact figure, but it was something like 333,000 or whatever it was. And we got it very precise. And um, so then we we found out where her upper limit was, did the, the, the clearings around the energetic reversals on all the different months and, you know, got rid of all of that stuff so that she could allow herself energetically to grow beyond that that amount and i said to her just out of interest go back and look at your your figures and then tell me what it is and it was the exact amount of the year when she actually went back and did the sums and so energetically what was happening was she'd have this windfall but of course that would have taken her beyond the amount that her system was calibrated to and so she was creating these sort of like roller coaster results. Yeah. Because of these energy reversals and that she was kind of recreating them because of, of course, the experience. It was exhausting. Mm, totally. So you mentioned that energetically things can stall. Could people also see this showing up in different ways of self sabotage? Like, oh, I've got this great client and and I, now I don't think I can service this client or I know they're going to ask for a refund or all of these kinds of things that come up. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's Those are such great examples, such great examples. And procrastination is a big one as well where we can feel like suddenly we are we were really motivated to do the thing or to serve that client. And then we're going to stall on it and not take the action that we want to take because we've we've hit that upper limit. And then we can create that more as it the resistance can then create an energetic reversal because depending on who you are, you may start to beat yourself up about procrastination, for example, and, and take yourself down down that rabbit hole as well. So there's so many pieces where energetically we can start to see this play out in our business and how we're showing up for our business because of what we're holding energetically and then the stories that the conscious mind is going to come up with to make it kind of reasonable Mm -hmm. like oh you haven't really got the time to do that and you're feeling a bit tired so actually you're going to take care of yourself right now by not doing x y and z Mm -hmm. when maybe you could actually delegate it and do x y z and go to the spa and take care of yourself yeah, um, I think the stories that our conscious mind can come up with that are ultimately the hidden resistances and the reversals are, uh, it's so clever. <laughs> it's so clever what it will come up with. Of, our conscious mind can be a bit of a rat bag, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, I fell for that one. Damn it. Yeah. And, and you know, it's funny you say I fell for that one, but most of this stuff just goes so under the radar. Don't even know you've fallen for it. And I definitely see it playing out in the, oh, I need to back off this month. I just need to take care of myself. It's definitely one of the things that I see coming to play. And a conversation I was having with someone yesterday just around this, I said, there's something that's telling me if you have a big win that energetically you'll get your, you know, you'll get your mojo back. And she went, you know what? You're right. 
I said, so backing off right now, is that really what's needed? Like sometimes it is, you know, we can't just push, push, but sometimes it's actually the opposite. And I, and I did, I called her out on and she went, you know what, you're right. I need, I need a big, a big, you know, personal win in my business because I know that that's what I need to be able to keep moving forward. Yes. And, give, and that gives you the energy again, can't it? Rather than Absolutely. staying in that stagnation that is going to just create that more contraction because we're always contracting or expanding. It's one of the two, isn't this? And are we, I think a great benchmark as well within that is to think about when we are making decisions from a place of contraction, is that reverse and that resistance energy that I was mentioning is kind of bubbling up at that point. Whereas if we are making a decision from a place of expansion, like I'm going to have a win, that's taking you forward, isn't it? I'm going to, oh, I'm going to take, you know, have a win in my business. It's going to make me feel really excited. I'm expanding, I'm growing. And then that allows more of that flow of growth to, to amplify. Yeah. All right. We've talked a lot about the symptoms. I'm sure that most people, if not all people, have experienced this at some time in their life, whether in their business or in different areas of their life. Mm -hmm. Now let's change the conversation. What can we start to do about this? Because it's one thing to go, okay, yeah, I've got that symptom, but now let's fix it. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Well, one of the, the very simple way that you can do this, and it really, really works is, and this is what I teach within the Helix Method, is Connecting in with your higher self. So one of the processes I use is connecting in with your higher self so that you're bringing all levels of your consciousness intentionally on board for creating the consciousness that you want to have and embody. And I say embody because our body is a consciousness. So we want to bring our body on board so that the cells in our body are in alignment with what we are wanting to create. They've got the beliefs down, they've got the emotions down that are going to be helpful, you know, to, to serve us moving forward. So we activate the higher, higher self, uh, because the connection's always there, but it's just being really intentional that we're actually right. I'm <laughs> being intentional. I'm going to allow my higher self and my conscious mind and my subconscious to all be in alignment. And then taking some time to, to do some muscle testing, to find out what is really going on. So we're not buying those stories that the the conscious mind has been coming up with finding out are we holding any energy reversals through the muscle testing are we holding any resistances in relation to let's say that you know blasting through the six figure mark or whatever the the next milestone is for people's for people's businesses and then finding out okay so what are the beliefs and the emotions that have been holding us back that ultimately come from the identity that we're currently holding Because we create from our identity. I know this is, and I'm sure you see it as well, as people are transitioning and growing their businesses, it's going to require a different identity to be able to, you know, show up as the CEO of the six-figure business, show up as the CEO of the multi-six-figure business. Different components need to come in. And so that's the work is around changing, letting go of the old identity, the old emotions, beliefs, thoughts that, you know, served in that moment in time, but aren't helpful for now. Dealing with it at an energetic level as well. So thinking about those reversed and the resistance energies. And then once we've changed that, so it is letting go and healing those pieces first, then going, right, what's going to actually serve me? What thoughts, what beliefs can I take for a spin that are going to be, that my future self would have, that I can really start to bring in and embody. And so then that's the next piece that we can do is to be able to start to imprint. And I call it, it's creating quantum coherence so that we've got that coherence between the feelings that we're feeling in our heart, the thoughts and the beliefs that we're thinking in our head and and our, our higher self-consciousness. And so when I'm working with clients, I spend time working with them, helping them to, you know, through breath work, bringing their heart into coherence and then we do the imprinting and it's so powerful. I just absolutely love it. And it's such a simple way to do it as well. You know, so that process is, you know, activating your higher self, the the connection with your higher self. I call it creating the consciousness of your future self. So that's where we're doing the muscle testing to find out what we need to change, what we want to focus on and then doing the releasing part, the healing part, and then moving into the activating the alignment and creating that 
quantum coherence. I love it. I love that it. That makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Just going back to the muscle testing piece, because muscle testing is something I do every day. If anyone ever goes to dinner with me and my hands are under the table, it's because I'm always muscle testing. What do I want for dinner? Because it's too hard to decide what's on the menu. I muscle test everything that's on the menu. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's actually very funny. When, when I first met my husband, he's like, what are you doing? I went, oh, I'm just checking what my body wants to eat for dinner tonight. <laughs> but for people that have not done it, how would you, because people may be watching, people may be listening, how would you describe being able to muscle test? Such a good question because there are different ways to do it, like you were saying. You can do it with your hands under the table. Um, <laughs> the one that I love doing is, which you probably wouldn't want to do at a dinner party because people would just think you <laughs> looked a bit weird, but it's <laughs> it's called the way technique. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, that one. No. So it's amazing. You use your body like a dousing device. And the reason why I really like this one is because it invites you to go within as you're doing it. And so you're paying attention to your body and then it's easier to kind of listen to your body. So how you do it, just to describe it for people who are listening and is basically if you were to stand up with your, and you can do it sitting down actually, but Ultimately, if I describe it for, for, for people who can stand, is you stand up with your feet hip width apart, knees slightly soft, so you can kind of rock a bit. And then if I just use my hand as a, as a demonstration, is that you then, I always get people to close their eyes and then you're going to you instruct yourself, like if you were using a pendulum, to say, right, if, you're, if it's a yes, you're going forwards. So you can literally say, yes, 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 yes. And your body will start going forwards for a yes. And then you say, right, body, <laughs> we're going backwards for a no. And you say, no, 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 no. And you'll go backwards for a no. And what I find is when people first do this, if they've never done it before, they might be like, your husband's going, what on earth are you doing? Your brain's going, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> this is really weird. I remember, I know when I first first time I was like what am I doing you know in my bedroom just going this is ridiculous and then it worked and I was like what just happened <laughs> um, because you feel it well I felt it so I feel it in my my uh, heart chakra area when I'm moving towards when it's a yes it's like I can feel a magnetic pull mm. literally pulling me forward and then when it's a no and I'm going back my body's swaying backwards for a no again I feel it between my shoulder blades and it's like a magnet going whoop pulling me back and so if people are new to it, I just invite you to give it a go with the sway technique see how it feels test it with things that you know to be true so you're not trying to do the sort of the deep dive stuff just to get your baseline reading so saying my name is whatever your name is so you know that's a yes how old you are you know you live in such and such street all kind of neutral things you can just start to feel confident with your yeses and then start saying things you know not to be true so you can start to feel confident with that feeling going backwards then once you've got your baseline you're good to go in terms of being able to go right what's time to give me back so you can ask yes and no questions and it's just such a great way to find out because often, you know, we were speaking earlier about the stories that our conscious mind will, will tell us. Sometimes people say, oh, I know this is happening because I'm angry with so-and-so. And you muscle test on it and it's not anger. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, what is it? <laughs> and that's how you can stop yourself going down the wrong kind of rabbit hole by really finding out what's 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 going on energetically. So I just wanted to share the one about the, the sway technique because you're then, because to get a really good reading with it, you have to, well, it works better if you close your eyes, and go within, and then you really listen to your body because that's going to give you so much information about what is the root cause of the belief that's holding you back. So when I'm working with clients, I will always invite people as they're saying the, the, the statement that they're muscle testing on, like what's happening in your body, where are you feeling it, any memories coming through, any sensations, and... You know, sometimes there'll be like nothing's coming through, or sometimes it'll be like, oh, I'm feeling really hot. I don't, you know, don't know why. Or I've suddenly remembered XYZ from my childhood. 
And that's come because they've been then listening to their body as they're standing there in that position and taking that moment to, to do the muscle testing. I love that. And just to be clear, this is not the method I use under the table when I'm at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> because there are different, different ways to muscle test. I just use a finger and a thumb and that is it. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> well, I do use that one as well you know, when I'm out and about. Um, oh, I, just, but, yeah. I just had the, I'm very visual. So I was just visualizing me sitting at a table, like rocking backwards and forwards, like I've had a bottle of wine. It was actually, <laughs> it was <freaking> me up. <laughs> Do you know what this sort of views you, Sam? Because my clients, when they have mastered the, you know, well, introduced to, to muscle testing with the sway technique, so many of them will go, I was swaying in the supermarket and they'll be going up to the different <laughs> vegetables and things and, and holding them up and, and, and swaying on them. And I just love to see the the CCTV footage. <laughs> oh, yeah. would we go around. oh, I would, I would be cracking up laughing. It's so funny. <laughs> Awesome. So once we have sort of muscle tested and we're starting to understand what some of these core problems are, you know, th this is a big question and we obviously can't answer this in a podcast, but what are some of the, I guess, techniques that we can use to be able to move some of these old beliefs? And I guess the, the add on to this, is this something that we can do ourselves or is it something that we need to work with someone else to do? Both. <laughs> and, <laughs> and not all. And, and, and. <laughs> so yes, this is absolutely something that you can do yourself. And I have got a, a guide that I'd love to give everybody that guides them through exactly how to do the process that I've sort of briefly described that you can use on your own. The and bit is the art is really in the questioning. And so um, I do find that when, when I'm working with clients that that's where they start to kind of understand, oh, because you know how we were talking about the subconscious will be very clever in, in the conscious mind, very clever in the stories it will say to, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, hide the resistance. Equally, we might not think of the, questions to ask because we're wanting to hide the resistance or our body's wanting to, to to hide it to keep us calibrated at that level that we're calibrated at if that makes sense mm -hmm. so it's I think it's always helpful you know to be able to work with other people that can just help you see those blind spots that you might be uh hiding yeah. and, and keeping hidden if that makes sense but so I recommend you know with my clients is to do this work daily you don't have to go down an energy rabbit hole of you know doing a three hour deep dive every day but just 15 minutes a day just really being focused on once you've kind of done the deep dive and done the clearing out actually really focus on creating that positive energetic field around all the thoughts and the identities and the emotions that you you want to have so that you're just spending a, just a short amount of time each day, really connecting in the vision of what you want to create, going through that six figure mark or the, the, the multi six figure mark, whatever it may be for you. So that your cells in your body know what it feels like before you go past it. So it's not such a shock to the systems. You don't create that reversed energy. Did that answer mm -hmm. your question? Yeah, it definitely did because we need to be as if we are that person now. This is a really, really important piece to being able to move forward. I think a lot of people are like, who do I want to be in the future? But it's not that. It's like, mm. who do I have to be right now to create that? But I did want to go back and just sort of touch on something you said there, mm. which was you need to ask the right questions. And there is definitely an art in that. And it's something that I've practiced over many, many years. And I just wanted to share a little story that had happened to me. Oh, it was probably about eight, nine years ago now. There was something, I, I won't go into the depths of the the story, but essentially something had happened where I knew that I shouldn't move forward on it. It was going to, mm. actually, I've said that in the wrong way. I knew it was something that was going to end badly. And I was asking, you know, is this going to happen and blah, blah, blah. Muscle testing, yeah, like all these things. And I just stopped for a second and I thought, I've got a better question. Should I still move forward with this? And the answer was, yes, I should. 
I needed to go through those bad things to come out. What ended up happening on the other side of this entire situation was, I, and I did, I was like, okay, I'm just going to trust that this is the right thing to do. It feels wrong in the sense that this is not going to end well. What ended up happening was through a whole heap of different experiences in this particular situation, I ended up meeting my now husband. Now, if I had have stopped in that night and not asked that very last question, should I still move forward with this? I never would have. I would have put a stop to it and I never would have met my husband. And I always think about this because it is very, very important to ask the right questions. And sometimes you need to be, actually not sometimes, you always need to be really self-aware that not everything is going to be sunshine and roses and lollipops, that it's very important to ask the right questions because sometimes it's about learning something that mm -hmm. is going to take us to the next level. That's amazing. Oh, I have goosebumps as you were sharing that. That's yeah, just I phenomenal. Still, Love that I, can, I can still remember that night so clearly. I was in tears. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And then I went, no, <laughs> stop. Let's ask a better question. <laughs> and I did. I mean, he was only six months. It was only six weeks later. So, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was incredible. That is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So you would see this, I guess, where, you know, I shared that story, but you would see this all the time with clients that you work with, I'm sure, where they need to go through a certain experience to let go of a belief, to learn something new. Do you have a story that you can share of something like this that happened with one of your clients? Oh, let's have a, oh, there's so many. <laughs> Let me <laughs> So, because one of the things I do say to my clients is the obstacles, let the obstacles become the way. And so that often, <laughs> but it is, if the opportunities come out of the obstacles, don't they? That's what I see Absolutely. is that, okay, so these obstacles come up. What is the opportunity within that so that you can then move beyond that? And maybe it is, the obstacle is, let's say you've had, I'm just thinking of a client who had a launch that just had no sales. So she'd gone from like, mm -hmm. the Talk about the roller coaster. Uh -huh. You go from the, the woohoo roller coaster to like flatline, you know. And I was like, what's the opportunity within this? And then she had her best month after that because she changed what she was offering and actually offered what she was complete more in alignment with rather than the thing that she thought she should do because that was mm -hmm. what she had done before, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Oh, my goodness. It's sometimes yeah. we need to give ourselves permission to kind of shift, like right? depending on our different energy types and things like you know I love doing lots of different things and I know there's lots of people out there with you know business models that would say just do one thing and focus on that that doesn't suit me you know I love having lots of lots of different things I think we have to you know be in alignment with who we are in fairness you are a manifesting generator so <laughs> doing one thing is not going to be super helpful for you at all <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, it really wouldn't. And it's, you know, it's so funny. Just, just to speak to that for a moment, when I found out about human design, I was like, oh, I feel like I have got permission to do all the things and not do the, you have to do one thing. Cause that just felt I was being trapped. Yeah. Um, that that was the, the, the first thought that came to mind was, um, in relation to that was, was recognizing that piece around how obstacles can become. Well, it's something I always say, but I'm sure everyone can kind of recognize that bit around, okay, hang on a second. I know that there's going to be challenges along this path, but it doesn't mean that it's not the right path to take. And when we ask the right questions, when we're muscle testing, we can get that better answer. The Often I will be advising people to say, is this for my highest good? Is this direction for my highest good? That's a great one to phrase to use when you're muscle testing and I'm sure if you you know you they would have been yes if you were going no I don't want to go that way it's actually that this is in your highest good to go that way because out of those obstacles hubby or out of those obstacles is going to be your best month ever and actually your new pathway for what you're now going to become known for in, in your business mm -hmm. you were talking about that client we kind of I got us off track a little tiny bit which is one of my superpowers is getting people on track. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good superpower. <laughs> well, 
Of course. <laughs> so we have to embrace it, right? Um, you were talking about how the offer wasn't quite right because that's what she thought she should do. And I see this all the time, people thinking like really only logically, like we do need to think logically. I'm all about systems and processes and thinking things through and strategy, but we need to connect it to our heart. We need to allow ourselves the opportunity to move forward in a way that we want to move or the way that we intuitively and instinctively know that is right. And I find that that's one of the biggest hurdles that hold people back is that, you know, when I say, is that really what you want to do? And my clients say, well, no, but, you know, I thought that I should do this or this is what I see. And it's like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. If that's, you know, you, you already know that it doesn't feel right. So, you know, going forward and, and really leaning into that. And I think that you know, we were talking about the or and the and before. I think this is a piece where you do need to have someone helping you a little bit to be able to see those BS stories that we're telling ourselves of we can't do that because we absolutely can. There is always the way. Oh, yes, I love it. That is always a way. I love it. Absolutely so true. And when we follow our, our hearts, we'll end up in the right place and, 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 yes. and in that alignment piece. And the, the challenges that we face, we don't have to have challenges along the way because I think it can be, it's how we approach them from our, our mental attitude as well. You know, the obstacles and the challenges and all the things is areas for development <laughs> is the way I like to think of it. If there's something coming up, it's like, okay, hold on a second. This is an area that we need to focus on to develop, whether it's resilience, energetic resilience, something strategic. And being able to see it like that, for me, is it expansive? rather than it feeling like, oh, I've been stopped, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I know sometimes when I'm, I'm joining Facebook groups and stuff, I go, what's your biggest challenge? And I'm like, I'm not joining that Facebook group. Because <laughs> 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 I just think, well, hang on, wh where's the kind of expansive, oh, the expansive question, like what's the area for development? Like, let's ask better questions because then we'll get better answers. Yeah, totally. Now, you did mention a little while ago that you've got a, a guide on how to heal your money blocks and to go through this process. Can you just explain a little bit about more, more about what this is and how people can get a copy of that? Yes. Yes. So I've got the link for you so that they can download it from the link. So this is a, a PDF guide that they can download that I take them through the Helix Method manifesting process. So we'll walk you through the activation to your higher self, how to do the muscle testing. There's a little link to a video on a YouTube with me demonstrating it so that you can kind of follow along with me saying, but you know, do this now, et cetera, uh, which can be really helpful if you've never done it before. And then I guide you through the, the, the piece around, okay, so let's muscle test on, on, uh, some examples of some mon common money blocks. So I've given six common money blocks in there with some examples of how to phrase the, the potential beliefs that can be linked to those particular money blocks. So you've got a starting point there. And then the phrases around, you know, how to let it all go and to heal it and then, and to listen to the body as you're doing that. And then once you've let that go, then how to bring in that quantum coherence. And so I guide you through all of that within, within the, within the PDF. So it's something that people can download, stick it to their wall by their computer. And if they feel the resistance bubbling up or they feel like something's wonky, then they can use that guide to help them, help them move through it. Yeah, use it while you're a bit wonky before the wheels fall off. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Love it. Louisa, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you today. You've just dropped so many value bombs and considering it's almost midnight there, you've been an absolute trooper. What is one little piece that you want to leave people with today that's so important to to remember or to take into consideration when we're thinking about really stepping into that abundance piece in a big way i think to kind of wrap it all up would be teaching your body how to be your future self if that makes sense so that your cells know what it feels like before you're there so you start to embody that consciousness and so that you're then able to less likely create more of those reversed energetic states that come in as you as your business is growing because you're already the, the the ceo of that next level because you've already done that work so your body's already calibrated to it 
I love that so much. Louisa, thank you so much for joining me today. And like I said, dropping all these value bombs, this has been such a fabulous conversation. Thank you so much for having me.